In this tutorial, you will learn how to use ChatGPT with Python. We're going to start all the way from the beginning and then we're going to dive into more advanced features like how to get structured JSON response from ChatGPT. And at the end, we will look into one of ChatGPT's most advanced features, function calling, which will allow us to use ChatGPT but with our own data. Let's not wait any longer, let's dive right into it. So let me show you the easiest way to get up to speed with Python and ChatGPT. Um, I'm going to open a terminal because what we're going to need, um, of course we need to install the OpenAI library. So I'm going to type pip install OpenAI. If you already have OpenAI installed, make sure that you upgrade to the latest one and pip install.env. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about the .env library in a second. Just make sure that you install it for now. Then let's close this terminal. Okay, so what you see here is first of all, um, uh, you see that I have uh, a section API key here. And if you want to go together with me and also build the script, make sure that you navigate to platform.openai.com. And then on the left side of the screen, you're gonna navigate to API keys and you're gonna generate an API key here. And then click here on create new secret key and call, let's call this one chat GPT Python tutorial like this and click on create secret key. Make sure to keep this key for yourself. So I'm going to copy it. And uh, if for any reason you want to remove this key, just click here on the garbage bin. And then the easiest way to um, integrate Python with ChatGPT is just paste your key here. But this is also the most vulnerable way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this entire part. And that's why I use this um, .env library. So I'm going to enable from .env import load.env. And I'm also going to run the function load.env and this library basically enables us to store the API key here. So in this video and also in all of my other videos, I'm just going to separate the API key so you don't see it. So I'm just going to put it here so that I can do whatever I want in, in this script and uh, we don't have to take care of this API key anymore. So basically how this script works, I'm initiating the OpenAI object here in this line. And then here in this section, you can set all the parameters about the API call that you want to make. Um, so at this moment, I have two prompts. I have a system prompt. So this is, this one is basically setting the scene. So I'm, I'm telling uh, JGPT that um, it's a helpful assistant. I can also change this uh, to a financial advisor or a fitness advisor, whatever you need. And then uh, this is the actual prompt. Give me 10 ideas for a YouTube channel about Python. Um, the way that ChatGPT will provide um, the, this feedback is um, in responses and then it can provide multiple responses. So um, you can also tell ChatGPT that it has to provide you like 10 responses or something, which is different than the 10 IDs, which are basically still summarized in one response. And that's why you have choices zero here, because you can also refer to one, um, two or three. But of course, the choice has to be there. And in this API call, I'm just asking for one uh, response. So that's why you see your choice is zero. And then you refer to the message and the content of this message because there is more meta information here. And if you want to know more about the entire response of JGPT, you can also print response uh, and then you will see the entire object that um, we get returned. But for now, I'm just going to focus on the output. And if I run the script, and then you get us output the 10 ideas that um, JGPT created for my YouTube channel. So if you want to um, work with JGPT4, you can just change this to a GPT4. You will see that the output of GPT4 is a bit different and as well that the model is a bit slower than um, GPT 3.5. So if you really need some performance, I would still recommend to go with 3.5. And if you want to get better responses, I would go with GPT-4 and make sure that you have a paid account if you um, are using GPT-4 because you need the $20 per month subscription if you want to access the GPT-4 model. And the question that I get a lot from people who obviously want to integrate JGPT with Python is um, if I ask for 10 IDs, sometimes JGPT give me, gives me something back like, hey, these are the 10 ideas. So um, the format is really unstructured and it's also not always predictable. And ChatGPT came up with something new for that. So if you navigate to the documentation and you search for JSON, click on JSON mode new here, you will see that ChatGPT also offers a, a response format, which you can then in turn set to JSON object. So I'm just going to paste this 
below the model like this, run my script and you will see that I get an error and the error is as follows, messages must contain the word JSON and some form to use response format. So basically, JGPT wants you to mention explicitly in the prompt that you want to get back the, the format in JSON. So I'm going to mention here, please provide the response in JSON, provide a title and a description for every video called title and description. And if you don't do this, JGPT will provide the format in JSON, but the format will differ every time. So it's not really usable because the, yeah, the output is not predictable. So let's run the script. Okay, and now you see that just as we provided in the prompt, that we get a title and a description for every video, and we don't get anything else than, than this. And you see that they are basically contained in um, videos. And this thing is also quite unpredictable. So I'm also going to mention and store them in dictionary videos. And if you don't do this, there will also be variation in the way that you get back this uh, JSON response. So just make it as predictable as you can by providing as much information as, as possible. And you will see that it's now again in a dictionary called videos. If I run it again, I should be able to get the same um, output. Yeah, so we have the title and we have the description here. And we also have them in a dictionary called videos. So that looks good. Okay, let's now see if we can write the output of JGPT to an Excel file. And in order to do that, I'm going to import two libraries. First of all, I'm going to import JSON, which is a default Python library. And I'm going to import pandas as pd. And if you don't have pandas installed yet, it's a really useful library for working with Excel files, CSVs, and anything else. pip install pandas. Make sure that you install pandas like this. Okay? Let's close our terminal. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to convert our JSON response to an actual Python object. So in order to do that, I'm going to add output underscore JSON, which is equal to JSON.loads output. And this will ensure that we can work with an actual Python object. And then I'm going to say videos is equal to output underscore JSON videos. So this will just remove the videos dictionary because we are only interested in everything that is part um, of this uh, videos um, dictionary. So let's do it like this. And now we can say for video in videos, we can create a for loop and we can print, for example, video title or video description. And you cannot see that we can um, loop through this list. So let's see what we get here. And now we get a list of, uh, yeah, of all these uh, video ideas, the titles. And if you change this to the description, you get a list of all the descriptions. What we want to do actually is we want to create a data frame and then we want to write this to an Excel file. So I'm going to say DF data frame is equal to PD, which is a reference to uh, pandas dot data frame. And we want to make a data frame of videos and df dot to Excel. And we want to write it to videos dot Excel as X like this. Let's run this script. I see as soon as the script has finalized, uh, videos at XLSX appears here. So I'm going to open it in the file explorer. Let's open it. I will see that we have all the videos here. We have the title, we have their video description, and we have an ID for every video. So most of the people I speak about ChatGPT were still quite skeptical. They have two arguments. First of all, they say that ChatGPT hallucinates. And secondly, they mentioned that the data that ChatGPT uses, um, ChatGPT just found it somewhere on the internet, and we don't know if it's actually true. And both of these arguments are really not valid because you can teach uh, ChatGPT how to use your own data. So as you can see on my screen, in this video, I'm going to teach ChatGPT how to connect with my own database and use the data that I provided. 
So for that, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to download the data. So navigate to this URL. You can find the link to this URL in the description of this video. And then you can download this a CSV with uh, the population data of a lot of countries. So I'm going to click here to download it. Then I'm going to just uh, copy this file, paste it on my desktop. And there is one thing that I still have to do with this file. So open with, I'm just going to open it with Notepad. And I'm going to remove uh, the first lines. So everything before this line. So let's remove these. Then let's save it. Close it. And I'm going to open a program that's called um, DB Browser for SQLite. And you can find a link in the description to this website where you can download this program. So um, a DB Browser for SQLite. So I'm going to create a new database. So I'm going to switch to my working directory, which is um, this one. Then you see that I already created a folder called database. And here I'm going to save this database as population underscore data. Click Save. And then, of course, DB Browser wants to know which tables to create. And what we're going to do here is we're going to import the CSV file that we just downloaded. So navigate to File, Import, and then click on um, Table from CSV file. Navigate to the desktop. And then this is the file you need. And that's the file that we just downloaded. So click Open. And then you will see that um, uh, the DB Browser will suggest uh, the table to create. So I'm going to call this table, let's just call it Data. Click on OK. And then you can browse this table here. And then you see here the table that we just created. So you see, for example, for Aruba, the country code is ABW. And the population is 54,000 inhabitants. And you see this for every country in the world. So I'm just going to make sure that I save this database. So file, write changes. And then we can close it. And then I'm going to open VS Code. And then we just need to make sure that we're referring to the right uh, data set. So you see that I'm referring to database slash population data. Um, that's the file that uh, I saved here. Okay, now let's have a look at how function calling actually works. So what we see here is the function. So this is the Python function that connects with the SQL database. Um, it needs the country code in order to fetch the output. And then what we are doing here, we are uh, basically making a summary of this function uh, for JGBT. So you see here that the name, so the type is a function. You see the name of the function is get country population. Um, the description, get the population for a specific country. Now this description is uh, very important. And then you see as well that we provide the parameters. So the type is an object and the properties. Um, so the inputs that this function needs are ISO country codes. Um, and um, of course we're telling ChatGPT here that this is a string. So a three letter string. And the description, the three digit ISO code for a specific country. Now, of course, if I change this to two, this function is not going to work anymore. So um, you have to provide ChatGPT um, a really good explanation of what this function does, the, the input parameters that it needs, um, and as well the output parameters um, that uh, it will get back. For example, the population, which is of type integer. And then I'm telling uh, JGPT as well that the ISO country code is uh, mandatory because without this uh, country code, this function is not going to work. Okay, then um, we are basically making our first request to JGPT. Um, the messages, uh, those are the messages that we have seen earlier. You're a helpful assistant. Please give me the population of the Netherlands. So we will provide these messages to JGPT. Um, we refer to the model GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then you see here as well, tools is tools. And this is where we are providing the tools that ChatGPT can use in order to solve this challenge. Tool choice is auto. Um, this is not really relevant for now since we only have one function, but you can imagine that we have like uh, maybe 10 functions or 50 functions. Um, so basically we're telling here to ChatGPT that it can itself choose which function is the most relevant for this specific request. Okay, so we are making this call, and this first call is only going to provide us the arguments for the function. So it's not going to um, give us any outputs. It's only going to give us back um, that the country code for the Netherlands is, um, I think it's NL NLD. Um, then uh, we're putting the response in the response message, and we are selecting tool call. And then we are checking if ChatGPT wants to make a tool call, because 
you can provide it functions, but can also choose not to use them. Then this is basically a library of the functions that uh, we can use. And what we are doing then is that we are adding uh, the message. So we are adding what JGPT has uh, provided, which is basically only the input for the function like NLD. We are appending that to the messages that we have seen earlier because we want to take them into concern for um, future responses. And then what we are doing here is uh, refetching the function name. So the function that JGPT wants to call, didn't make the call yet. Uh, and the function arguments, uh, we are uh, extracting them um, uh, with JSON here. And then this is where the actual uh, function call is made. So JGPT is not making the actual function call. We are, and we are providing um, uh, the country code as an argument. So this is what JGPT has only done until now. It's only provided um, that the input is NLD. And this is, so this is where we make the actual response from this script, not from JGPT. Then the next thing that we are doing is uh, we are again uh, appending a message. So basically what we are doing, we are showing uh, JGPT the entire history, everything that's, that happened in this conversation. So let me show you what messages looks like now. After um, we made the first call, I'm just gonna comment out the output. So let's run it. So in the start, you see here the, the first uh, messages that we provided to our helpful assistant. Um, and please give me the population of the Netherlands. And then this is what the first uh, JGPT call added. Um, so the role assistant, a function call is null, two calls. And this is the important part because here it's defining the, the function that it wants to call here. Name, get country population arguments, ISO country code is NLD, right? So this is really important. So let's get rid of this. So we are basically adding this to the messages to tell ChatGPT this is the first response that you provided uh, so that it also knows what it has done uh, before. Then we are making the actual function call and um, as soon as we are doing this, uh, we are also getting output. And then here we are again adding uh, a message. So um, this message includes the tool call, call that was done, uh, the name of the function, but as well the content, because now um, here we call the function. So now we also have the output of this function, which is the population of the Netherlands. So when right, I'm gonna print messages here like this, um, we, we are also telling ChatGPT this is the output of the function, okay? So these are again the first messages. This is where ChatGPT provided us the input, so ISO country code is NLD. Then we've made the function call, and then we are providing uh, ChatGPT with, um, uh, so we have executed uh, count, get country population, and the content is 17 million. So we, we are providing back to ChatGPT um, what the output is from this function. Uh, and then in the next step, we're making another um, call to ChatGPT. Uh, so we're making a second uh, call. And then here we are again adding all the messages that we have sent back and forth until now, including the number 17 million that you have just seen. And then uh, ChatGPT is providing us with the result. And then you will see that the result is uh, the population of the Netherlands is approximately 17.7 .7 million. And this brings me to the conclusion of this video. ChatGPT is insanely powerful, but it's even more powerful if you use it as an agent on its own database where it can fetch data, but also manipulate data. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you back in one of our next videos.